Do you see names on them? Yeah, I, I see my name. <laughs> I see I no my names. Name. I see my... Uh, Neil, do you see your name? I do not see any names. Okay. I see mine. Ah, that, of course, I know why. It's because you weren't in Roll20, so I couldn't add this one to your... You are you. This is in William Onahan Gallery's. This is gonna be awesome. The third. Save changes. William Onahan Gallery the third. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't you know? Apologies, William. Apologies. I know your family line is rich and full of history. Uh, do you see your name now? Nope. Let oh, me no. refresh the page. I added it to your journal, so you should have control of it now. Maybe. Determined by character settings. Uh, let's see here. I want to make sure you can. Yes, there we go. I need to make sure you can control it. Save changes. There. Maybe that should do it. Okay. Yes. So. Succeed. Wonderful. Success. Um, so here's how you're going to make opposed horsemanship rolls for the race. Um, everyone gets your fastest horse. So in this case, that's generally going to be your charger, unless one of you wants to choose your round seat for, you know for the sake of it. Um, your horses should all have a speed of eight, a movement speed of eight. Mm -hmm. So we have this, uh, these, these squares. Each square represents um, a single yard of movement. So in a single turn, your, your horse will generally move eight squares. So um, every successful horsemanship roll will allow you to move ahead one extra space. A critical success will allow you two extra spaces. Failure means you move only half of the usual speed. So on your marks, shouts Sir Elid from across the courtyard. Get set! Go! And he waves like a white strip of cloth through the air. Um, so, wonderful. Is that within your uh, horsemanship, yes, Sir Elid? I have 15. Or, great. So you move a full eight <clears throat> paces. So go ahead and move your horse. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bum, 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 cool. Uh, Ronald, what's your horsemanship? Fifteen. You have a crit, so you get to move two extra spaces. So move yourself two spaces beyond Neil. Sir William. How do I move this horse? Wow. Did I select it? You should just, you should just be, be able, able to grab it. it. Okay, so I go right like there? Yeah, beautiful. Oh, this is cool. Oh, shit. Quinn, 17. <laughs> that's a miss. So you only move half of your usual rate, so you move four squares. Go ahead and adjust your position. And uh, Emrys, roll up, that's, roll that's up for a it. fail. Oh, so you also roll, uh, roll up four paces. Oh, um, Elid is cheering from the side, and a couple of children from the castle have come out, and they're all cheering and screaming. Come on, you can do it. Ronald, Ronald Uthbert, please win this race for us. Uh, there's like a young, a young girl in the crowd uh, of children, and she's, she's like waving to you, Ronald, as you swing by, and she says, Ronald, if you win, I'll give you my colors. <laughs> oh, goodness. I raise my, my lance, and I like, yeah, you know, get, you give get a them all riled as up. Yeah, gallop by. Beautiful. So go ahead and give us another roll, Ronald. Oh, crap. Uh, Ronald, would you put a check on your horsemanship? So on your character sheet, there should be little okay. check boxes yeah. next to every what is, skill what is that, and whatever. What does that mean? In the winter phase of each session, you will do a test against that skill in order to see if you increase it as a result of using it. Whenever you get a crit or wow. whenever you do something that advances the story significantly by acting in accordance with your skill or trait, That's you'll get cool. a check. So I get to give That's them out cool. whenever I want, and you All get right. them for doing well. I just rolled an 18, and I have a 15. So that's a fail. So you only move forwards four paces. So go ahead and move yourself. Let's find out about uh, William Monahan Gallery the third. Would you roll for me, please? Seven. Seven. Success. You move forwards a solid eight. Uh, Sir Elid from the sidelines begins cheering. He says, ah, oh, William, you're uh, making steady progress down the, uh, down the track. And um, Quinn, go ahead and roll for us. 11. That's a I success, a yeah? Oh. No, I have a 10. <laughs> so you move forwards four. Elid begins, uh, begins encouraging you from the sidelines and saying, don't give up, Quinn, you can do this. Uh, and some of the children begin jeering at Emrys, saying, Emrys is going to be last. Emrys is going to be last. <laughs> 
What? How does that make you feel, Emerus? That these little kids on the sideline are like teasing you for not racing well? Uh, I just respond to them. I was, I was never built for the for the land. Yeah. Uh, what's your like pride? My pride? Yeah. Um. You're asking what? Oh, you're just asking in general. I thought you were like asking a stat. No, I am. What's your What's your pride stat? You, so is that modest or proud? It's thirteen modest, yeah. seven proud. Oh yeah, you're totally like totally okay with this teasing. Have no problems with it whatsoever. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, William, you're in the in the lead. So go ahead and make your next attempt. Ronald is not happy about this, William. Mm. Neil. Neil, roll. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm not used to being called William. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a success. Yes, yes. One, you move a solid eight paces. Five, six, seven, eight. And Ronald, you're in the second place. Ah, keeping good pace. Move yourself forwards eight paces. Um, tied in last place, we've got Emrys and Quinn. Uh, Emrys, go ahead and let's see if you can break out ahead of Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, four steps. And Quinn, can you can you uh, make something happen here? Emrys, don't worry. If you come in last, I'll come in last with you. <laughs> oh! Ah, well done. Okay, that's full eight. But sorry, my horse won't slow down. <laughs> <laughs> As you ride he's, by, I'm just like, I'll see you at the just, finish line, sir. He just keeps going. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're coming up to the very end of the courtyard here. William, give us another roll. Let's see if you can finish Let's it do out. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. You move forwards eight Shh. paces. The finish line is immediately in front of you. And uh, how about um, Ronald? Yeah, nicely done. A full eight paces forwards for you. Quinn? Oh, fuck. <laughs> what? Two, three, four. Oh, oh God. And uh, uh, Emrys. Hey. Oh. Okay. You get eight. So you, I think you catch it back up to uh, Quinn. Right? <laughs> yeah, I ride up to Quinn. It's like, hello, <laughs> old friend. <laughs> At least we're making this a competition, huh? I, I, as uh, we're riding by side, I say, how does William's horse support him? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, the children begin like shrieking as as William approaches the the finish line. Go ahead and give us a roll, William. Just a d twenty. Yes. Yeah, you tear across that finish line clearly in first place, no problem. Um, and Ronald, I think you're in close second. Give us a roll for that. Yeah, you go straight across the finish line, moments behind William. Um, Quinn and uh, Emrys, let's see how you do. Quinn? I just I say, after you, Quinn. <laughs> let's take it to the finish line. Eight. Yes. All right. <laughs> I'm oh like, I'll, I'll meet you there, friend. <laughs> I'm just ganting along as slow as possible. All right, Quinn, make another roll. Twelve. Yeah, that's full eight, right? That's fail. Right? No, oh. that's far. I'm like at the end now. Okay. Oh, I'm about to cross. Emrys, you got a uh, full eight, right? Oh, I'm right here. Oh <laughs> my god. Eight. Okay, both of you roll. We'll see which of you is faster in this last segment. Go ahead. Nine. Oh, that's really okay. close. Okay. Oh. oh okay. Yes. So. Uh, yes. Emrys and Quinn end up tying for third place. That's ridiculous. <laughs> you guys are adorable. Uh, William, go ahead and add one glory to yourself. Yeah. Ronald um, is not particularly happy about this. In this He's year, losing. 490. Won a horse race. Yeah. Congratulations, okay. William. Uh, Sir Elod comes over and he, he congratulates you all looking up at you from the horses or from down on the ground up on your horses. And he says, ah, well done, my friends. Well done. You've learned quite well. Uh, William, it seems like your speed makes up for your uh, lack in accuracy with the tip of the lance. 
Well, these old bones need some time to warm up. <laughs> uh, Sir Elid sort of like bends down and massages one of his knees and he says, Ah, I, I know that quite well. Now, listen. We have need of your talents. Do you think you four could take on a task for the good of the country? But of course... I would do anything for Earl Roderick. Wonderful. I'll take on any task. Excellent. And uh, Emrys, can we count on you as well? I just nod, but I don't say anything. Yeah, wonderful. Very well. Um, it seems as though uh, the peasants from a nearby town have reported that there is a man-eating bear in the West Acres. Right. Now, I, I have never heard of such a thing. It's probably a rabid dog. Uh even if it's a chipmunk, though, you must go and take care of it, because they claim it is too dangerous for them to come out and work the Lord's fields. He shakes his head ruefully. Um, now, since you will be heading out on this quest, um, which is perhaps a deal more uh, significant than any task we have set you to up until now, I would like to make sure that the four of you really feel confident in your skills and confident in your leader. Uh, what do you say? I have an idea. Why don't we have a joust down this picket? The leader or the winner of the joust can be the leader of your expedition to capture and kill the bear. What say ye? Sounds like a capital idea, sir. I say we take it at once. Excellent. Indeed. Excellent. So, um, um, Quinn steps forward and says, if the job is to hunt a bear, then my skills of, uh, of hunting and, uh, and uh, observation and awareness are going to be beneficial regardless. So you fight amongst yourselves, whether it be for honor or leadership of this group, because my skills are needed regardless, and I will step aside. Oh. Now let me see. You are um, Quinn. Did I get your... Uh, yeah, I did. Your character. Let's see here. Do you want to, um, you know what? Go ahead and give yourself a check on your modest. Because I think that's, that's very modest of you to bow out of this combat in order to, uh, in order to let your, your friends joust each other. Yeah, Ronald well, would not. Ronald's all I, like, no, I gotta I've be the leader. I've seen William's <laughs> character sheet, so <laughs> keep that between us. <laughs> So uh, a joust is a non-lethal sport that uses blunt and easily broken lances. You will use your lance skill in opposed resolution. The higher success will win. So um, let's see. Uh, would all of you roll a d10, those of you who are going to participate in the joust? I, uh, when, he, when he tells everyone that we should joust, I step forward and say, like, for God does not wish... Uh, friends to fight amongst each other, so I bow out, and it, it is between William and Ronald. Wow. Hmm. Mm. Maybe discretion we're going to look like ass ass <laughs> when it is truly discretion. I shall watch from the sidelines. Good luck to you both. Huh. <laughs> Steven's like, this was not how I planned it. <laughs> That's that's quite <laughs> unexpected. That that knights would be reluctant to joust. Um, Sir, I had Elid, a good reason. Sir Elid looks at you, Emrys, and he says, "Emrys, art thou feeling a little uh, weak in the knees this day?" Please. Oh no, not at all, friend. I I know that you have a a passing successful lancing skill. I have seen you uh, strike targets many a time. Of course, but I do not need to prove it to you or to the friends uh, I have here. They can battle amongst themselves. I know where I stand. Aye, very well, very well. Let's see Friend, William this is and not Ronald. For standing, <laughs> this is for sport. Come now, enjoy the field of battle. Your voice sounds a little shaky, friend. You don't want me out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, William and Ronald head to opposite ends of the jousting pitch. And uh, their horses paw the ground, stirring up the dust around them in eagerness to tilt down the length of the, uh, of the field. So, um, 
Once again, Sir Elid stands in the center. He holds up a, uh, a long strip of white cloth, and he says, Jousters, at your positions, and forward! And uh, your horse is immediately sensing the, the start of the game. They begin I, thundering down the length of the pitch. I lean over yep. towards, uh, towards Quinn, and I go, what, what's the, the currency here? It's denarii? That's like the... It's Librem, or Denari is the small, the small currency, yeah. How much do I have on my character? Uh, I think you've got, like, I think you probably have none, actually. Because <laughs> uh, as squires, your, your existence is owed entirely to the discretion of your lord, basically. Okay. Never mind them. You could certainly make a bet, you know. Emrys, <laughs> if you wish to make a wager, then you can take my nightly duties for one week if William does not win this duel. I, uh, I kind of eye William. I'm like, you know, I don't believe it's his day. I'll, I'll take that bet. <laughs> okay. What, what uh, are your nightly duties? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a squire has to like, you know. Uh, oh, they, okay. Yeah. yeah. So like you're, right. you're serving your night and like cleaning, cleaning up stalls and, and or something. rubbing down. <laughs> yeah, the exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I like it. Yeah, so uh, the the two combatants, Ronald and William, go thundering down the pitch. Their horses kicking up great plumes of dirt behind them. Both of them slowly bring their lances to bear. Now, uh, neither of you are actually wearing armor at this point in time, uh, or at least you're just wearing, like, padded jerkins and stuff. Um, both of you make a roll against your lance skill. And I'll tell you how the opposed resolution works. So do I Seven. add my lance skill? No, you're rolling against, so you're trying to get lower than but close to your lance skill. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. dang. Okay, wow. Um, My lance skill is 15 plus 25. Plus 25? Because I have a plus 25 because my lance is blessed. It's plus one. Oh, you said plus 25. Wow, I said oh. wrong. <laughs> Plus twenty five is enormous. When, so that these means be like practice lances anyway. Yes, these are. You're not actually using your blessed lance because this. These are just uh, training lances that you're using. Yeah, you said twenty five to lance skill. Oh man, oh, I was wrong. Like, no, wait, didn't she get a bonus to some? Oh no, that was orator. Never mind. Come on. Yep, I lied. I am sorry, Maggie. Yeah, that would so, have been uh, like badass. The two of you strike each other firmly in the shoulder. Um, neither of you breaks a lance and neither of you are unseated, but both of you are pretty rocked. You end, uh, you, uh, gallop down to the other end of the pitch and turn ready for another go. Well met, uh, Ronald. Let us try again. And you begin like charging down the length of the pitch once more, uh, leveling your lances at the last moment. Go ahead and roll a second time. Ooh. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Ooh. 15. Okay, William Onahan Gallery III strikes Ronald Uthbert squarely in the chest, completely unseating him. Um, your lance splinters and cracks, though it doesn't shatter, and uh, William ends up landing in the dust. Um, William, you take 1d6 damage from the fall. You mean Ronald? Yeah, Ronald. Oh, sorry. Shouldn't yes, I Ronald. be taking the damage? Yes, okay. it's you. Yeah. Two. Okay, you take two damage from the fall. Um, it knocks the wind out of you, and Sir Elid comes over and reaches down and clasps your wrist. He says, Ah, well, Ronald, that was well ridden, but uh, William is a terror when he gets his weapons in his hands, as we all have seen time and time again. I'm well, a terror at all times. <laughs> <laughs> He turns to um, Quinn and Emrys, and he says, Well, gentlemen, I have your leader. I pronounce William Monahan Gallery III the leader of the expedition to slay the man-eating bear. Now, off with you. Um, I, would you like to leave now, or would you like to leave in the morning? I say in the morning. Get a good night's rest. Aye, that does William? make a lot of sense. What, what time of day is it? It's probably mid-morning. It's, oh, it's, it's already... probably like, you know, 10.30 or something like that. Oh. I, I look to our fearless That's... leader. <laughs> Let's well. see what he says. 
the day is young. Let us gather some food, some supplies, and we shall head out. Pray, tell us, where do we go? Ah, says uh, Sir Elid. He says, you're heading to a town, uh, a, a small village at the bottom of a valley in the downs. It's called Imber. Now, um, it's a small town. Uh, the man you're looking for there is named Old Gar. He is the priest of the town. Really, there's only a, a handful of people living there anyway, but they say that there is truly a problem in the area, and and they need some uh, strapping young men like yourselves to go and help them out. Now, um... I give, uh, what, what's your name? Quint, JP, who are you? Emrys. 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 I give Emrys a smile when it says strapping, young man. <laughs> I look back and <laughs> give him like a weird look. You have 17 strength, dude. You're ripped. <laughs> You're ripped. <laughs> I, still give, I still give you the weird look and I'm just like. And then I, yes. I, turn, to, uh, I turn to Quinn. I'm just like. <sighs> All right. Watch, watch your bets next time, <laughs> friend. I'm like, yes, yes. All right. So the, the four of you gather a, a small satchel of foodstuffs from the kitchens of uh, Castle Vagon, and uh, you begin heading off down the road, um, you know, uh, riding on, I'm assuming you're, you're riding on your round seas because your chargers, generally speaking, um, they're they're precious enough that you don't want to exhaust them by riding on them, you know, to and from places. Okay. Now, uh, that means that the journey takes you, um, let's see. I don't think Ember is actually on the map here. Um, it takes you, uh, about half a day to get there. So it's, it's just down the west of this road. So if you just look, at um, the area that I'm pinging. It's probably about here. Okay. Yeah. So uh, on your way, um, you're, you're traveling along the Salisbury Main, which is an old track that runs along the tops of several of the rolling hills. Um, and then from there, you're, you're heading, heading to the road and then north to uh, a place called Till's Head. And I don't see that on the map either. I'll have to see if I can find a different map that shows more of these locations. Um, anyway, um, uh, there's an old hill fort visible off to the left as you uh, as you pass the afternoon called Hamburg. Um, and there's a crossroad. Uh... Ah, yes, okay. This is actually, um, we're going just past Berwick St. James, which is, um, which is uh, Quinn's Manor. So we're actually coming up this way. Oh. Okay. And at the crossroads, um, so I guess, I guess we're coming up sort of over to here, near the Blakemore Wood and the Crockwood. Um, just at the crossroads here, past Berwick St. James, you can actually see off in the distance um, the standing stones of Stonehenge, and um, you end up passing close to the, de to the dense forest, the Blakemore Wood in the west of Salisbury. Um, Ember is a small village at the bottom of a valley in the Downs. Uh, you approach it in the late evening after having a, a light supper of you know, bread and cheese and apples from your uh, travel pack. Um, would each of you make a stewardship roll? Oh, shit. My stewardship is terrible. Well, yeah, mine is... Okay. So it's the D twenty. See how we compare. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald, is that a success for you? I don't think so. Maggie, um, I don't think so because I just have the default, which is two. I think late. all of us have two. I think every single yeah, person. Yeah, so has it's two. not a success for me. I'm closer to it than everyone else. I think. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, you know, you see uh, a number of fields surrounding the small village of Ember. All of the houses here are made of, like, um, mud daubed on, uh, like, logs that are holding up the frame of the houses, thatched roofs. Uh, a couple of them have uh, clouds of smoke billowing up from them. Um, there are a number of uh, hides stretched out to dry in the fields nearby. Um, 
it has a, a spring pond that you pass on your right as you as you ride into town. You also pass a mill on the left, which rather than being driven by a stream, is actually driven by oxen. There's like a brace of oxen tied to this mill, and they're just sort of driving around. The uh, the young child who's driving the oxen with like a small whip looks at you um, kind of askance out of the corner of his eye, uh, as if he doesn't really trust you. Um, you're you're arriving in evening as as uh, the sun sets. Let me see. There's actually like you all know that. Um, there are specific services, church services, that happen throughout the day. And uh, I can tell you which of them is currently ringing. So um, it's approximately Vespers, which is the evening prayer or the lighting of the lamps. It happens at about 6 p.m. when you ride into town. Um, as soon as you get into town, uh, an old man steps out of a... Um, a larger and better kept house that has a, a cross hanging up above the door. This must be old Gar. He's wearing a tunic that's just uh, a brown leather tunic. Um, he's a strongly muscled man. It looks like he has spent much of his life in the outdoors. Uh, he's not hes not a scholarly looking individual. He looks very uh, physically active. Um, do any of you have recognize... Would any of you like to try and recognize anything about Old Gar? Um, yes. Ronald. Roll against your No, recognize. I was pointing at Wheat. I don't oh, know what oh, he yeah. is on the actual screen. I, He's like I there have for a, me. I have, a, I have a 10. All right. Uh, Quinn, go ahead and give, give, give us a recognize roll. Two. Oh, ho, ho, ho. well. Um, you, you, you see Old Gar and you recognize him by description uh, from some of the conversation around Castle Vagon. Um, you remember hearing that he's the younger son of an obscure knight. And so, you know, like when his father perished, he didn't really leave Gar anything since he was a younger son. Um, and you also heard that he lives in sin with his mistress of many years um, off of the income that he gets for his job as a priest. Uh, he loves hunting, even though he's no master of the hunt, and he he's, serves his community as a competent field medic. Um, he approaches the four of you as you write in. He says, ah, yeah, you must be the four that were promised to aid us against the man-eating bear. Well, uh, I know not your names, but please uh, come tie up your horses outside my house, and I can, I can welcome you into my home and uh, give you fe food and rest for the evening. It's it would be unseemly to head out into the forests at this time of night. Will you join me? That is most gracious of you, sir. I take it you are Old Gar. Yes, yes, Old Gar I am, a humble servant of God and this Christian nation. Uh, and, of course, the small community of Imber. Now, it seems as though uh, many of the farmers are unwilling to go and work the Lord's fields and... Of course, naturally, Sir Roderick can't have that. Uh, I take it he told you what uh, what the challenge is in this area. We've been told that there is a man-eating bear out here, and we yes. have brought one of the finest hunters in all the land, Quinn, oh. here to deal with this matter, as well he as turns... my compatriots, Sir uh, Ronald and Emery, as I myself am William. Ah, fair met, William and, and Quinn, I hear... Uh, an excellent hunter. In fact, I, Quinn, Quinn, do I, have I heard that name before? Have you perhaps, uh, proven yourself at hunting in the past, Quinn? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I am, I took down the largest bear that's ever been taken down in Berwick St. James. Ah, yes, yes, I remember. <laughs> Nearly laid your leg open to the bone, if I recall, not? yes. Actually, well. that was my brother, but <laughs> your, you know, God, ah. maybe your memory isn't what it used to be. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm, so I, I'm sure you I, right. I step in, I'm just like, Quinn, do not insult the man. <laughs> no, my brother is the one who was injured. Uh, I saved him from the bear. Fair enough, Quinn, but go about correcting uh, him in a better manner, perhaps. Old Gar waves his hand. He says, uh, young, young man, uh, 
Emrys, yes, yeah. Uh, no, no harm intended. Please come in, break bread, have a, have some bread and salt with me, and and I will extend the hospitality of my home to you. I can Emrys. tell you all about the local environs, and we can sally forth on the morrow to conquer this beast. And and well, as as if Emrys uh, corrects me, I just I say you know Gar comes with a set of stories himself for this man is also known to be uh, a man who loves to hunt and loves the thrill of the chase so perhaps Gar you could tell us why you haven't yourself gone out and conducted this hunt uh, on your I, own tis a long story and I will gladly share it with you over a bowl of my Mira's soup Come in, come in, and he beckons you indoors, helps you tying up the horses and rubbing them down before issuing you forth into his house. Uh, let's take a three-minute break and come back and continue the adventure. Cool. We'll see you guys in three. Thanks for watching.